afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm the director of R&D at Intelligent Concrete, where we save the world with all the concrete in it. We're going to be going over an exciting bit of information today, Mixing Concrete 101, module number five for our Air Force Academy cadets. And what we're going to focus on is ASTM C-94 and ASTM C-192, two different ASTMs used to mix and make concrete at a ready-mix installation and here in our laboratory. Now, it's important to understand both of these, especially for our cadets out there, our junior engineers, because when you get out to the real world or the construction industry, both of them are used in two different environments, ultimately to save the world with all the concrete in it. So let's dive into it. ASTM C94, uh, standard specification for ready-mix concrete. We've got three methods. Uh, the first is a central plant mixer where we're taking all of our materials and we're mixing it in a big drum before we put it into the back of a ready-mix truck. Now, the means and methods that we use, the sequencing and the distribution of material, is really up to the ready-mix provider, but what you'll see through all of these, there's a very generic concept going on where we're putting the majority of our aggregate in the front end with some head water and that head water is anywhere between 75 and 85 percent mixing that up a little bit and some of our admixtures do go with that head water into that aggregate but ultimately we're going to put our cement in there to be followed up with a little bit more aggregate to clean everything out if that's done some folks don't do that and then we put the rest of our admixtures on the tail end but everything gets mixed into this big drum the central plant mixer and then it's discharged into our truck and normally we're making somewhere between five and ten cubic yards and you can go a little bit lower than that i never feel comfortable going below five cubic yards and if we assume that a cubic yard of concrete is just below four thousand pounds let's just call it four thousand pounds we're making somewhere around twenty to forty thousand pounds of concrete using this method now there's another set of methods where we're not mixing it in the central plant mixer either the entire time or any of the time. That entire time concept when we're mixing a portion of the time in the central plant mixer and a portion in the truck, we call that the shrink mixed concrete. Where again, we are using something akin to a central plant mixer, but to reduce the amount of time to get our trucks out the door, we're mixing it for a shorter duration in that central plant mixer. And then the remainder of the mixing is going to be done on the way to the job site in the back of the truck. And then finally, in our dry batch plants or our plants where we're not using a big old drum or a central plant mixer, we're using the trucks to mix up our concrete and we discharge, we sequence all of our raw materials directly into the truck. And then our mixing takes off from there as we head over to the job site. Okay, let me switch sides over here. Our ASTM C192, uh, we're making and curing concrete test specimens in the laboratory. And when we do this, we're doing much smaller batches. Instead of doing 20,000 pounds to 40,000 pounds, we're doing somewhere between 150 pounds to maybe 1,000 pounds, uh, and maybe a little bit more. So what we traditionally use is machine mixing. We're using either our 3.77 cubic foot capacity mixer, big blue, or we're using our nine and change cubic foot mixer, big red. Um, and what we're doing is similar to what we're doing in our ready mix plant, our central plant mixer, and our dry batch plant, or our truck mixing, except for we have a more regimented method of making that concrete in our machines in our laboratory. First and foremost, we gotta butter up that mixer, which we don't normally see in our ready mix operations that would cost a lot of money and take a lot of time. We are buttering up our mixer here to take into account the amount of paste that's lost in the mixer when we take the concrete out. Then we're putting our coarse aggregate, some water in the mixer, mixing it up for a certain amount of time, some of our admixtures if that's necessary. Then we're putting our fine aggregate, cement and water. Later we have a 332 mixing time in there. So three minutes of mixing, three minutes of rest, and then two final minutes of mixing. Then we discharge it into our receptacle and start our testing. Um, there is a hand mixing method. I don't use it very much, but it is there. And you are mixing up your cement, your fine aggregate, and your powder admixtures, uh, mixing those together, and then mixing your coarse aggregate and your water, or excuse me, until all of it's uniform. Once that's uniform, then you're bringing in your water 
and uh, mix until uniform. Now, the reason why we do that, if you put your water in first, um, you, you're going to get some wet pockets on the bottom of your bucket or whatever you're hand mixing it in that receptacle. And it's a lot harder to get that mixed through when you're doing a hand mixing compared to when you're doing machine mixing or your ready mix outfit. So hopefully you learned something today. It's important for you to know the differences, especially when you're reviewing data, especially when you're the one creating those samples in our standard controlled environment versus the real Crete. So this is book Crete lab Crete. Here we have real Crete. It's important to know that there are standards um, regulating those, making sure that everybody's sticking to the same rules so that we know that we're making concrete all the same way. We're sticking to those quality control practices to save the world with all the concrete in it. Thanks for joining us. Go concrete. Be asphalt.